Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Fat Jocks. Thanks so much for listening, tuning in, watching, whatever you're doing. Really do appreciate you guys uh, watching, listening, doing whatever you're doing. Got a great episode this week, but before we run it all down, go over to Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star review, give us a subscribe, rate, do all that good shit. Subscribe on YouTube, and uh, if you want us to talk about anything on the show, send us over an email to fatjockspod at gmail.com. That is fatjockspod at gmail.com. Hey, uh, Mr. Brian Vokey, what are we talking about this week? On this episode, we start off with the dick pic kid, the man, the myth, the legend, the now fired general manager of, of the New York Mets. He was sending unsolicited penis pictures to Japanese reporters. Gotta go! Uh, we got also a preview of the NFC and AFC championship game. We look ahead to the Super Bowl, Urban Meyer. Is he a bust or is he going to work? Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson, and free agent potentials. We also go into baseball free agency. We do a deep dive on Bill, the Spaceman Lee, and uh, enjoy the show. Personal file, 69, offense. He was giving them the business. This fat son of a bitch. He's fat. Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fired. I just hope we can win a game. He's fat! I'm a man! I'm 40! I'm gonna kiss you. I couldn't care less about the team struggling. Hey everybody, welcome to Fat Jocks. We're back, we're reminiscing, we're we're talking about old times. Brian, how you feeling, dude? I'm feeling pretty good. It's a uh, busy sports week, so I'm glad because that means that all I have to do is watch TV and then I'm thoroughly researched for this podcast. Yeah, you're like Donald Trump, dude. You just watch yeah, TV exactly. and that's how you get all your information. <laughs> dude, I mean, it really is a busy week. We were about to, we were literally, what, 15 minutes away from recording last night and then uh, somebody just randomly messaged me that Jeff Passan just broke that big thing about the Mets GM and we were kind of like, dude, we, let's see how this plays out and let's wait to record tomorrow. And the way it's played out since then obviously which we kind of knew they were just going to fire the guy like what else are they going to do you know let him resign that was the only options it was yeah and it's i kind of thought of that today i was like yeah they just came out right and fired him steve cohen's not fucking around dude this is so i mean obviously by now if you're involved in sports in any way you're well aware of what's going on the new york mets gm jared porter who man by all means had it made cut his teeth with the in front office with the Red Sox, with the Cubs was the assistant GM with the diamondbacks came over to uh, the Mets in December as their GM that GMs make a good amount of money. He had a great life. Like he's making probably a million bucks in a year in baseball. What, 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 what more could you want? You know, apparently an Asian girlfriend. That's what dude. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, uh, and I've read pretty deep into this. Apparently this thing was in 2016. Yeah. This was all in 2016 that this all was going was on with, with, with the Cubs. He was with the Cubs. Yeah. And in 2016, this, like the reporter basically said, I'm not, I don't want to come out with this just because of like the way that I'm not sure exactly what country she's in, but the way she I explained it, which Japan. makes a lot of, it, it, it has to be Japan or Korea as far as baseball stuff goes. Um, and it just, the way that she was talking about it was like in my country, no matter what happens, if there's any kind of sexual scandal with a woman, the woman gets dragged through the mud. And now that since like then Japan. she is, yeah, she's out of baseball. She's working on something else. I think she has an only fans. Um, no, I don't know. She, uh, she was kind of like, let it fly, but I don't want my thing to be my like name to be released. And Jeff Passan broke this story last night. Shouts out Jeff Passan. He's a fucking, he's the best dude. He's the is Adam he Schefter the of baseball. Did did Jeff Passan make the video that's on ESPN? Where he what video? The story in front of a Nintendo. Probably he's a, he's a pretty young dude. I don't know how young old or young Jeff Passan is, but he's a pretty young dude, and he's like the baseball Adam Schefter, which is fucking sweet. Um, but so apparently Jared Porter in 2016 was, and apparently there's a kind of a language barrier between the two, and he was. I've kind of gone through and read all the messages, and he's just a, a creep. He's a an idiot. Like he's. He's a creep. Yeah, he's the- a, he's both. He's a creep and an idiot because, yeah, it's uh, because for initially she's responding to the text, so I could see why, you know, a, a doofus would think that she was interested. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way that he, the ESPN article that I read and some other stuff I read, he at one point said, sent 60 
unresponded to messages in uh, like 48 hours. Yeah. And then the, at the, he like sent one and he's like a fat and that's what it's, this is a big loss for fat guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Some of us fat guys are out here doing okay. You know, we're not doing this. We get our pussy the correct way. Okay. That's, mm-hmm. that's, I'm talking about this. Like I'm a Republican. Marriages. Yeah. I'm talking about this. Like I'm a Republican talking about illegal immigration where you're I'm like, like, Hey, you're like a, a guy who's talking about the QAnon, you know, how they're ruining the name of the Republican party. Exactly. Hey, I want fat guys to get pussy more than anyone else, but I want them to do it the correct way. Okay. The right way. And that's what I did. That's what I've been doing my whole life. And welcome and- to the master class. On, how to get <laughs> on fat guys getting pussy <laughs> it's taught by me and stavros halkius yeah um dude so he said he like had sent one of like his bulge in his pants when he's laying on his back in a hotel room bed and he also sent a few selfies of that classic fat guy i'm gonna look less fat by like opening my mouth in a picture, you know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, like he's trying to hide his triple chin, which I understand, dude, I'm all for hiding your triple chin, but just, what are you doing, dude? Don't be a fucking creep. And he sent the 60 unresponded to text messages. And the very last one, he was like, you know what? Those 60, those 59 didn't work, but number 60 is the kicker. Here is my hard dick. Mm. Yeah. He really, he, he thought he needed to up the offer. Uh, which makes him a terrible salesman. And also this guy, first of all, it's important to point out that he cut his teeth in the Red Sox organization, but he started as an intern and he worked his way all the way up to the head of scouting. He had it made. He had it made. Head of scouting is a great job. But also it's a job based on observation. You've got to judge people's temperaments. Can they make it in a major league atmosphere? How will they do under the lights? How will they do with 60,000 people watching them? High pressure situations. You've got to read personalities. And a hundred percent, this guy ahead of a scout for a team and not, it's not like he was the head of the scout scouting for some shit team. Like it was a team that was racking up world series. Uh, and Red Sox and Cubs. Team. He's a, he's a Theo Epstein guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Theo Epstein was with the Red Sox and then went to the Cubs. Yeah. So he, he took them with him. So uh, and, the, and if Theo Epstein sees enough in you to take him with you from one team to another, it's like, you've got something going on. I got a text today from one of my friends who's pretty like way into baseball, especially he's like, isn't it crazy that a guy who's smart enough to get a GM job, be the head of scouting for the Cubs is also stupid enough to send 62 straight unanswered texts. It's uh, it, he's getting what he deserves, but it just sucks for the Mets because the Mets are finally relevant again. And they got, you know, they had, they were becoming a destination team, especially after Dude. landing Lindor. Lindor. I wonder if this is going to affect the Lindor deal. I mean, I'm assuming that's already locked in, already signed. I don't know. I didn't look into it, but the Lindor I mean, deal is definitely set, but I would imagine that this is going to dude at the end of the day, in my mind, the Mets are the Mets are the Mets. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like same dude. This is kind of very similar to the Carlos. Beltran thing. Carlos Beltran gets signed. He doesn't ever manage a game with the Mets two months later, let go. This dude gets hired, breaks a crazy deal, does a great job, brokers an incredible trade, gives nothing for fucking crazy good talent. And immediately before the season even starts, he's gone. This just is such, this just puts a stink on the Mets that they do not need right now. Here's my question. I wonder and, and like, I, I'm glad he got what he deserved. And that, I'm oh, not, yeah, he's fuck him. Yeah, fuck him. But what I'm saying is it's always interesting how these things drop because it's like it's an ethical issue. And an eth- but ethical issues always drop at really convenient times, like, say, when an organization, maybe a yep. crosstown organization is uh, starting to become relevant and starting to become maybe grabbing the headlines. What I'm saying is I wonder if somebody from the New York Yankees we're like, you know what? Fuck these Mets. We're going to have this in our back pocket. And uh, as soon as something big happens, we're going to take them down. Because I I can't assume that it came out, you know, a month after signing Francisco Lindor for no uh, for no reason. Or like, I, I imagine this has been kicked around and somebody threw it to Jeff Passan. I would, I don't know. I don't want to say. No, too- this has been, well, this has been kicked around since 2016. Jeff Passan has known about this since 2016. Oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't read that. So they've all, a lot of people have known about this since 2016. It's kind of Louis CK ish where people knew about it here. And like, it was, it was like kind of an inside thing. They just didn't break the story huge because specifically props to Jeff Passan props to ESPN. They didn't, um, 
they didn't, the woman asked for it to not break because she was still in baseball and didn't oh, want this to go down. See, That's kind of what I was saying earlier. It's kind of more shame. You see how much of a Red Sox fan I am. I'm like, yeah. like <laughs> the Yankees <laughs> held on to this information and they waited till it, not because they care about that woman, but because they want to slander another organization. I'm Absolutely. completely no, not 100%. respecting a woman's wishes. Okay. My bad. That's what I'm saying too. Props to Jeff Passan for being a, a decent gentleman in that, in that regard. Especially but, because how hot would that have been to put that out in 2016 when all the heads were rolling you know what that I would mean? have been yeah that would have i mean now is i don't know this makes me think that the mets are done in free agency because right now they have no gm who's brokering these deals right now do you know what i'm saying maybe they have their their president or like head of baseball operations whatever but it's like or this puts such Cohen a stink on the Mets. jerry jones and just being an owner slash gm right now I mean, maybe Steve, dude, I mean, you know, Steve Cohen, he tweeted this morning that the Mets have terminated Jared Porter. So I mean, he even said, right, Cohen right. said in my initial press conference, I spoke about the importance of integrity and I mean it. He's like, there'll be zero tolerance for this type of behavior. So, which, I mean, obviously, obviously so zero you know, tolerance for something there's been rumors about since 2016. Yeah. And you know, of course they're <laughs> like, well, I didn't know. I didn't hear about nothing until just this moment. And it's like, who fucking knows, man. But Jared Porter had it made, dude. I'm not sure exactly how old he is. I don't even think he's 40. I think he's like maybe 38 to 40, early 40s. He's a pretty young looking dude. And he rose just, I mean, you fast. You got it made, dude. You he got has it made. Right what are you podcaster doing? face now. So it seems like he's going to be like, a, he's going to have to become a Republican podcaster. Well, it's like, dude, you got it made. Board. You have it so made. You're a young GM of a team that has never been more on the up and up. Yeah, that woman. I re- now I realize what you're saying. She left the industry. She's no longer in baseball, and yeah. uh, I think somebody explained to her that the American media would be sympathetic to her, and it's worth it. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's. Not, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not cool, and it's this guy's a fucking piece of shit. But as far as what I think happens from here is, I think that. I think this means George. I mean, I'll talk about all this later. I think this means George Springer's going to the Blue Jays, and that Trevor Bauer's either going to the Blue Jays. Uh, I don't know. Blue Jays make sense for Trevor Bauer because I, I got some more saying, Trevor Bauer you stuff later. You saying Trevor Bauer is going to the Angels. I did, but then I've since read more stuff about that, and you I think the get complete on the opposite. Record saying that he's going to go to every possible team, then we can cut it out and be like yep. Bruce called this. Trevor Bauer is purposely staying so far out of everything. I got. I'll talk about all that stuff later in the baseball stuff, but uh, let's get into some James Harden, Kyrie Irving stuff. James well, Harden. Uh, first we could get into, well, yeah, you're right. Cause we could just, we'll just do our New York area. Cause I was going to go Mets to jets because uh, Brett Favre sent a dick pic to a reporter and then the Mets and the jets, they're both their fan bases are kind of long Island Queens. It's like the same chunk of New York likes both the jets yeah. and Mets. I thought that was a, a decent segue, but we'll, we'll get into them after let's get into James Harden. By the way, the Nets won the shit out of that trade. The Nets. Oh, the Nets or the Rockets? No, the Nets, dude. I was watching. Dude, the, are you sure? The yes. Rockets got Victor Oladipo four first round picks and mm-hmm. four first round swaps. Mm-hmm. I know what you're saying, but that's it. Gotta- that's eight picks, and nobody knows. I was somebody else was saying this. I'm not. I'm. This is a point that I heard that makes a lot of sense. These picks go all the way to like 2027. Who fucking knows how good the Nets or the Rockets are going to be in 2027? Do you know what I'm saying? No, yeah, of course. But what I'm saying is if you're in a win now mode, this is a great trade. The other thing is Yes, I mean I NBA, agree with that. The NBA draft the the first round is like minor league you're drafting 19-year-olds. Like everybody's one and done now. There's not a lot of rookies who come in and make crazy impacts right away. So the Nets they can let the other teams develop all this these uh this talent for 2-3 years and then trade for them later. Uh, they don't, I mean, drafts aren't how you build the team in the NBA anymore anyway. So I think the first round pick is a real, it's really, gr- it's great trade bait. And you'd have nothing but upside when you're getting a proven Looks good commodity on paper. versus an unproven commodity. No, you're hundred percent right. I mean, like I, even like we were talking about baseball the other week is that it's just anyone's a, sorry, this, this bottle of tequila is, is leaking onto the table because it was frozen. So I'm putting it on the ground. Uh, Cause uh, you like to throw it in the air and shoot your handgun at it. Yeah. yeah this is a Casamigos plug. Um, yeah, no, dude, I, I, cause I remember me and you talking about it initially. I think we've kind of changed stances where I was like, dude, the nets crushed it. The nets have a crazy big three. And you were like, and you, and initially you said the rockets won the trade. I did. And I, but then I watched, 
a, a Nets game. And now I, Kyrie Irving hasn't played with him yet, so we don't know how he fits into that equation because uh, James Harden was essentially playing point guard last night. But when I watch the way they, I mean, they play NBA Jam basketball. It looks like yes, a hundred percent too. Uh, but Durant, dude, James Harden, Harden's been passing the shit out of the ball though. He scores at will. DeAndre Jordan works really well with James Harden. Like they have a really good old school center, like pick and roll type game going on. They and look great. James Harden looks great. He, he, what happened? He came from Houston and somewhere between Houston and New York, he took off his fat suit. I, I, he still looks, the, he's just a lumpy dude. I don't know. Just, he was way fatter in Houston and he was eating so much fucking strip club chicken wings somehow. Yeah. And now he's just somehow immediately gets skinny and shredded when he gets also, to New York. I, I, in defense of James Harden, I am so sick of people not acting like they wouldn't live exactly how he lives if they were in his situation. Of course, uh, of course. But everybody, including myself, you'd think you'd have a little bit more tact, you know? Yeah. Well, it's not his fault. Other people don't have tact. They're taking, it's not like he's posting selfies. He, it's other people taking pictures of him. I don't know, man. Do you read any of the shit about like Russell Westbrook and him? The way that that relationship deteriorated is that the, 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 which James Harden is a great player. I have no, I'm not saying James Harden isn't the, one of the best players in the NBA top three on top offense four. on offense. Of course. But one of the, the worst way that, defensive players in the history of basketball. Yeah. Cause he's thinking about pussy the whole time, which who isn't uh, it's when the way that that relationship deteriorated the way that that relationship was in general. I mean, they're both very hard headed. Russell Westbrook's one of the most hard headed people mm-hmm. in the NBA fucking history, but that team in Houston was built as the James Harden show to the point where James Harden would be late to a film meeting and mm-hmm. they're all just waiting and waiting and waiting. And that's kind of what ended the whole thing is there's like a whole story about how Russell Westbrook like blew up and was like, I don't give a fuck start the fucking film. And they're like, we're going to wait for James to get here. And he's like, I don't give a fuck about James. James doesn't give a fuck about you. So start the shit right now or else I'm leaving. And then they were like, we're not. And then Russell Westbrook left. Right. Well, I got to tell you, those stories really change tone if you don't win a championship, because if they won a championship, they'd be like James Harden's. And it would be like how they talk about Jordan going to Vegas to gamble or Rodman like. Well, Rodman being like, I need a couple days off to go get fucking drink a hundred beers in a night or something. You're a hundred percent right. Because if Rod, if the bulls didn't pan out, Rodman would be one of the biggest villains of all time. Cause instead he's over here eating Carmen Electra's pussy and doing whatever he's doing in Vegas too. Jordan Jordan was a gambling party and dude, he was taking private jets to Vegas in between games and all this stuff. They all do it. It's uh, and you got to look at Russell Westbrook though. You can't take him too seriously because you got to think Harden Westbrook and uh, Durant were all teammates in Oklahoma city, right? Who are still friends and who have falling outs? Durant Harden still friends, Russell Westbrook, him and Durant hate each other. Harden and Westbrook. They hate each other. Russell, Russell Westbrook, who is those, his style of ball is my favorite out of all three of those guys, because he's a psychopath and I love it. And he'll just, I love Durant. I love Durant. I love James Harden. I think, I just think that Russell Westbrook's, like Russell Westbrook reminds me of how we always talk about the Cole Beasley's of the world is that he's just like, I don't care if I snap my neck, I'm going to score 40 right. points tonight. Right. The guy's going way too hard with a 20 point lead. It was like, a yeah, yeah. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that too. Kyrie Irving on the other hand, I don't know how he gels with that team. I don't know what's going on with him, by the way. I don't know what's going on. And me and you were, uh, uh, we, you were watching something earlier that said the same thing. Max Kellerman on some show made a great point that he's missed twice as many games as he's played with the net. Right. He's not, but it's also, it's also, it makes, I don't, I don't understand it. I mean, last season he was saying that he was, he was like, I mean, he wasn't even in the bubble because he was injured, but he was like every, we should just cancel this whole season and all this shit. But he left Cleveland to go to Boston because he, Wanted in, to be the man. Yes. He didn't want to be a number two. Now he's a number three. Yeah. That's, that's piss and shit mixed together. My brother. And uh, <laughs> he didn't want to be a shit. He wanted to be a piss and now he's piss and shit. No. <laughs> I don't, I mean, it? this is a question I have for you. If he, if, if you, if you are the nets right now, mm-hmm. do you see how this plays out? Mm-hmm. Or do you trade Kyrie Irving right now before he goes full Arian Foster and retires? I see. I don't think he's going to go full Arian Foster. Arian Foster is the real deal. 
Arian Foster is, uh, he's, he means what he says. I think Kyrie Irving is, Arian Foster knows who he is. Kyrie Irving is like, he's like a dude who de- has had no chance to discover who he is. Like, it's like, he's going through, he's like, at one point he was a flat earther. Now he's yeah. a civil rights activist. And it's like, he's been rich since he was 19. He's only played basketball. He's trying to figure out something else in his life. And he's kind of obnoxious because there's some arrested development. I mean, he was like, I have this shit, so I can't judge too much, but he was like, you know, <laughs> you're like, if you're just listening, Brian is lighting sage in his podcast <laughs> yeah, studio so, right now. Uh, I just have this in, in here, but, but he was saging TD garden when he went back there to get rid of the bad juju. And it's like, it's really hard. It's like having a teenager around. It's like really hard to watch somebody grow up in public because it's like, yes, but it's, also, I mean, it's, it's fucking Macaulay Culkin. It's Justin Bieber. It's everybody. He was at uh, the mask thing. I understand how serious the pandemic is, but any, what, and it's stupid when millions of dollars are up in the air, but like it was a family party. I, I don't know. I don't judge him. Too Dude. Much it's so that. funny watching Stephen A. Smith talk about it because he like keeps going back and like Kyrie Irving's doing a lot of off the court nonsense. And he, of course he's doing a lot of civil rights stuff. And I appreciate that, my brother. And then he's like, and I saw the picture. He's no mask. He's over there dancing with his sister, Asia at a party. And that seems like a good time, my brother. And he just like (laughs) goes back and it's so funny, dude. This is what Kyrie Irving does to you. Like he, uh, you know, and one day he's telling you the earth is flat. The next day he's doing something cool, like buying a house for George Floyd's family members. Like, yeah. And it's like, of course, and I have no issue with any of that. You know, I got shot with rubber bullets. I understand the struggle. And he, I understand all of what he's doing. I, I get it. I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whenever me and my me and a couple other patriots were storming the Cinnabon to find the, the documents, we were trying to find the Cinnabon recipe. We're like, where's that cunt? And fucking, we're breaking the Cinnabon this, windows. Listen, to get I the totally recipe. disavow the Capitol siege, but if the Packers win the Super Bowl, I'm going full Buffalo guy, but at Wingstop instead of the Capitol. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, and it's like, I don't know. He's healthy. What, there's no, just, this is I, I the best, a, this is the best position he's ever been in to win. Of course, um, with LeBron, it was great. That was a great, obviously it was great. And they did, did win. win. So they did win. <laughs> but as far as, from an outside perspective, the position of having on your team, two former MVPs, two guys that could easily win the MVP this year, plus yourself. I don't, I don't understand. And he endorsed Steve Nash as the coach. Whenever they were like going Mm -hmm. to hire Steve Nash. Now they're like, we hired Steve Nash. He's like, that's what's up. But now he doesn't want to play for him. There's just, somebody's going to, I don't know, somebody that needs to interview him or something needs to go on Joe Rogan and let everyone know what the fuck he's doing. People also don't understand. Um, he was on a Zoom call, which I'm so sick of Twitter snitching. Uh, he was on a Zoom call with a district attorney like a half hour before a game, and everybody was using that to slander him, being like, "He well, the rest of his team was preparing to play the Denver Nuggets. He was on it. He wasn't playing in that game. I don't know what people think athletes need to do. Like every time my dad sees Aaron Rodgers in a commercial, he thinks he filmed that commercial that day or whatever. And he's like, what the hell? He should be focusing on the NFC championship game. And he's filming frigging commercials. Like he should be. And my, whenever Aaron Rodgers gets a girlfriend or anything, my dad flips out. Cause he's like, he's not focusing on football. It's like Kyrie. Irving your d- your is- dad thinks that he's tiger woods, dad to Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> exactly. And Ky- Kyrie Irving being on a political phone call for a, a district attorney candidate, a half hour before a game has no bearing uh, in a game. He's not playing has no bearing on he's, do you think the guy, the guy's been in the league nine years, he's a perennial all-star. I don't think he needs to be watching nuggets film before a game that he's not even playing in. Like a lot of the slander. It's like, if you break it down, the biggest thing he's done is he's sat out games. That's, that's the biggest thing he's done, but going to, I mean, bigger than that, he's just creating such a distraction. Do you know what I'm saying? He's such a child too. And you watch like the press conference he gave. He today. is. And it's like, I, I love Kyrie. And he's got his chin like relaxed on. And he's like, kind of like giving it like this. And it's just like, he can't be bothered to be there. He's the anti Marshawn Lynch. It's like, if you're going to be animus with the media, you got to be entertaining. You can't be a yes. brat. Nobody likes a brat. That's, that's the perfect word is that he's being a brat. Right. But then again, who knows? Maybe the guy's got, mental health issues that we don't know about. Uh, I think he's got to. Yeah. What, I mean, what else he's, 
There's no, why is he not playing? There's no real answer. Nobody has an answer. Kyrie hasn't coming out and given an answer. So nobody knows. I think, I think the deal is he's just thinking there's got to be more than basketball. He's going through one of those. That's things. Arian Foster disease, son. Yeah, but Arian actually, I, I don't know. I believe that he will find something more. But you know what we need to do? We need to sit down. We need to sit Kyrie down. And we need to play him that speech Kramer gives Jerry when Jerry get, almost gets married. And he's like, yeah. you're asking yourself, is there something more? Well, there isn't. And I think like Kramer is the best, you know, ironically, Kramer is the best person to talk Kyrie off the edge here. Yeah. See, I mean, if Kramer wouldn't have had one bad night in his life, then <laughs> hey, we all have had a bad night, right, fellas? Yeah, we need Kramer to talk Kyrie back into getting on court, but or retire. I don't really give a shit because I'm not a Nets fan, but I don't. I think the Nets are fine with or without Kyrie. I think Kyrie's a professional enough to make it work, and he's old now. Like his knees are always messed up, so he can't he can't be that. I dribble for 19 seconds every possession guy anymore because he's just not that young. So I think the age will make him work. I mean, Chris Paul worked with, with James Harden. That wasn't a big problem until they had a big falling out, but I'm saying on the court, like as far as the logistics of their games. Yeah. I mean, last thing I'll say is that this team is cool and I just wish I have, I don't follow basketball enough, but I wish it would have been the Knicks because I think the Knicks are such a cool team that are forever fucked. Yeah. I hate the Knicks. I don't give a shit what happens to them. Yeah. All right. What do you got? Let's move on to football here. Um, Actually, sorry. Last thing. LaMelo ball is looking great. Rookie of the year. I wish LeVar was on the news more right now. Yeah. LaMelo. I mean, I don't know about rookie of the year. I mean, you got, he's leading all the polls. He's leading all the betting. He's leading it all son. Uh, yeah. But you got Tyrese Halliburton out in the, at Sacramento. Who's killing it too. Um, but well, he was involved with some Blackwater stuff. Halliburton don't like it. <laughs> The, one of the worst punk lyrics ever written was a Bay Area punk band said something that rhymed um, Halliburton with Hella Burden. <laughs> 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 one of the worst lyrics I've ever heard. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Contracts with Halliburton. Well, that's hella, That's a Hella Burden. Or so, I don't know. Uh, Jesus. All right. Football. <laughs> let's talk about it. Yeah. Well, we got the conference. Do you want to drink? Do you want young, to party? We got the young guy. Aaron Rodgers, only 37, taking on the 43-year-old Tom Brady. Man, uh, he is – I didn't realize he was 43. That is old, man. <laughs> yeah, it's very old. He's uh, he, – like, I think he was in the league when Troy Aikman was in the league. I was thinking about that because Troy Aikman was calling the Saints-Buccaneers uh, game. And I was like, I think these motherfuckers were in the league at the same time. Dude, he's going to his 14th. Division championship game. Conference. Conference. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Conference. That's what I meant. That's a much bigger deal. He looked pretty damn good, too. I mean, he looks, you know, he he looks great. 199 yards, but doesn't look like Drew Brees. I got to tell Drew you, Drew Brees like, looks like you out there. I know. But by the way, can we talk about Drew Brees? We'll get back into this. But Drew Brees, for, is he iconic to you? I know he's like been around forever and he's got all the records. Is there, is there a Drew Brees moment that pops into your mind? When you think like, I, I don't know if there's a moment. I think it's the longevity. He, Do you know what I'm saying? I file him away with Philip rivers where I'm like, I know. No way. I You're crazy. Think, Drew Brees has been in Drew Brees. He has, he's like the all time. He has the most passing yards in a single season. I believe he has the most passing touchdowns in a single season. I believe this could all be fake uh, or not real. I could look it up, but I'm not going to also, I don't know if, if you've ever read into Drew Brees shoulder injury in San Diego. Do you ever read, have you ever read into this? His shoulder was like destroyed. James Andrews pretty much reconstructed his entire shoulder. The chargers let Drew Brees go. Cause they were like, this guy can never play again. Right. Yeah. I understand all that. And he had a great career. But when I picture Drew Brees, I picture his overly rambunctious children running around and being annoying during interviews. You um, know what I picture is a very funny interview where he was interviewing uh, on like the red carpet at the ESPYs. And um, he was like talking with them and they were like, so how's your family doing? And I don't know if it was him or his wife was like, he's good. He's like, we're trying for another kid right now. And then there's like a pause and he goes, trying's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, I mean, he's a first, ba he's a first ballot hall, hall of famer. And that's not even a question. I know I'm not, listen, what I'm saying though, is when I think of Aaron Rodgers, I think of 
these Hail Marys and these like certain plays. When I think of Tom Brady, I think of a QB sneak in the middle of snow where you can't even see the goal line and these uh, these comebacks against the Falcons. And the, I, I, I don't know when I when I think of Drew Brees, I already think Patrick Mahomes has more legendary moments. I, I just Drew Brees in my mind. He there's nothing iconic about it's all him. it's a longevity thing. Yeah, it's a longevity thing. I mean, it's just like the guy's going to be remembered what for like out out you know little sweeps and bubble you know screens. I don't know what the hell the guy. I mean, I, I think it's just longevity of being an elite quarterback for so long. Yeah, I just yeah. When I think about it, it reminds me of like, um, you know, Jim Kelly or like these other like. These quarterbacks, I know you're telling me they're great. And I know they are great, but uh, there's just nothing. There's no uh, mystique, no mythology. Well, I mean, it's it. like the season where after Hurricane Katrina, where they came back to the Superdome and won the fucking Super Bowl. I think that's like four years after Katrina. No, it was the year after Katrina. Katrina it was the was fir- 2005 and they won it in 09. They won the Super Bowl the year after Katrina. No, they didn't. Are you positive? I'm positive that he won it the year before Rogers. He won it 09. He won it 2010. What am I thinking? I thought they, I thought they like went down the field and after the Katrina and maybe mm-hmm. I'm wrong. Maybe the he Yankees sucks. won it after nine 11. Oh, now you like the Yankees? No, those were two tragedies. If you ask me, um, but I just really, I, I, I don't know. Drew Brees doesn't do it for me. I, I'm going to tell you, though, I'm a homer for the Green Bay Packers, but I think this NFC Championship game is going to be a doozy. I think it's going to be, you know, the NFC Championship game, there isn't as much of a home field advantage for Green Bay in this situation because it's like 25% capacity. You, you're not going to, anyway, even if it was 80,000 people, you don't shake Tom Brady. The other deal is like the winter. You think like bringing a dome team, Drew Brees is historically really bad in winter games. Tom Brady spent 400 years playing in Boston and Bruce Arians. He became up as a coach in Pittsburgh. Uh, Gronkowski winter player, uh, Leonard Fournette, not a winter player, but a big fucking winter style back. And uh, you got a really good defensive front and an offensive line. So I don't think there is a screaming, uh, you know, advantage for green Bay. I it would have been a lot better if they were playing drew Brees, but I, prefer Aaron Rodgers to go through Brady and Mahomes just to be, you know, temporarily undisputed. Uh, yeah. yeah. At least for the moment, you know, it won't make his career better than Aaron Rodgers, but I, I, I mean, uh, better than Tom Brady's, but the defense green Bay's defense is played really well, but the bucks defense is, is better. I think though, that it's going to be a great game. I mean, I, I can't call it either way. I Obviously. think green Bay wins because they can score at will. They can, they've been scoring so fast in Tampa Bay's offense. The only reason they put up 30 on the saints is because breeze threw three, ter- three uh, picks. And yeah. there was a punt return that went down to the 20. They had insane field of, uh, you know, field position advantage. So I think green Bay wins cause they can score, but over if Mahomes plays, it's all bets are off. It's going to be Mahomes Packers super bowl. But if Mahomes doesn't play, I think the bills make it, which is a bummer because yeah, I even wrote that down that. I mean, if the, if Mahomes plays it, it, the chiefs are going to glide into the super bowl, but I mean, what everyone's saying is that it's not even a concussion. He's out, he's they're saying he's like out of concussion protocol and that it was a nerve thing. Cause he got fucking, he, yeah, got, he got like got Turkey slicer and headlock. Yeah, dude. He got like reverse DDT. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a, I forget what they call that. Like a, a running DDT or something. Yeah. Something. It was like that thing in wrestling where they run and they just slam your face down. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It, like it really did look like that. That was if a I great was a, dude. If they I was almost, a football player, if I was that dude who hit Mahomes and made his knees wobble, dude, I would be like, I would act professional, but in my head I'd be fist pumping so hard. I would be yeah. like, dude, I'm the dude who took out fucking Mahomes. Yeah. And, you're yeah. I mean, with you're no fucking, penalty, mind you, I took him out. Yeah. And I didn't even cost my team anything. You're Lee Harvey Oswald up in this bitch. More Jack Ruby. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're killing okay. the assassin. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he got his fucking bell rung, dude, you know? Classic. <laughs> Me and you, even after that, I even texted you. I was like, dude, Mahomes is cross-eyed like he is. And you were like, looks like nobody's Mahomes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not good looking, man. It was Anybody not good. Mahomes? He's- yeah, he's got that toe thing going on too. His toes no good or something. I'm not sure, man. I mean, Chiefs are Chiefs are man. Even if even if Mahomes doesn't play, Chad Henney's got the fucking 
balls of steel, dude. Chad Henney put his nuts up on the table and won that game for him. I there's nothing I love more than a backup quarterback who knows who knows for a fact that if he gets hurt, it's over and still dude. diving head first. It is such a Ryan Fitzpatrick fucking big baller move to be like, you know what? I'm selling out because it's the only way I know how to go. <laughs> and I don't dude, care. That was a, it was a hundred percent. It was like, dude, it was fun it was to watch. Just like, it was, really it was incredible. I, mean, I was, I, was, I, the Browns were like starting to look like they were coming back. And I even kind of wish that Baker Mayfield would have got a shot at the end of that game, but they just, Chad Henney just put his nuts up and fucking, that was, that was incredible, man. I love that. The chiefs are looking just so solid overall that play. I can't, I don't know the DB's name, but that play that dude made on the one yard line. When that guy to force that touchback was such an incredible football play. Aaron that just classic dude, just fucking hard hitting, just unbelievable one-on-one play right there. Yeah. Uh, it was a penalty. Uh, it, it was, it was leading with your head, initiating contact with your helmet. But I'm kind of glad they didn't call it. It reminds me of the NBA playoffs. So they're like, all right, you guys can kill yourselves a little bit more. This is the playoffs. We're going to let yeah. you. Uh, but I still think I, I just I, it's better for football that the best rosters make it to the championship game. So I really hope Mahomes plays and I really hope it's a Packers Chiefs. Of course, game because you want to see the number one and number two MVP candidates going against each other for all the marbles. I think that's just like a better Story. Yeah, I mean, Packers Chiefs is the best Super Bowl, right? Is the best Super Bowl option. No matter who wins out of the NFC, they're gonna and who wins in the AFC, they're gonna sell it as the old versus the new. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Jared Allen's like twenty four, Mahomes is twenty five, Aaron Rodgers is thirty seven, and Tom Brady's forty three. The NFC. I would like to see. I mean, I will, obviously I think the Packers Chiefs is the best way it's gonna be, but I would like to see the Bills in it. I think the Bills are fun. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just want to say, I like sports when the best teams are there and that's my of problem course. With, of course. with one and done style tournaments where it's like, you have one bad day and you're gone. And then you end up with like, if you remember the 1994 Super Bowl where Steve Young played the chargers and the chargers were with Neil Humphrey. I don't even know who the fuck Stan Humphreys. I don't remember their fucking quarterback was, but they, uh, yeah, they annihilated them and they weren't supposed to be there. Yeah, uh, and that that's never fun. But everybody's saying Deshaun Watson um, is most likely to go to the New York Jets. They just hired Robert Salah, first Muslim coach in football, which is uh, a real um, what do they call that? A Venn diagram, common area of both of my podcasts. Yes, um, where you have a the yeah. Is Ramsey stoked? Uh, Ramsey's upset that his name's Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I said, and I sold the Praise Salah, place. dude. Praise yeah. Salah. All, I told all him, he said, to Salah. I said, there's the first Muslim football coach. And Ramsey goes, is he a really a Muslim? What's his name? And I said, Salah. And he goes, oh, that's my grandfather's name, Salah. And I go, yeah, Robert Salah. And he goes, dude, Robert, I don't know. I mean, is he really? And, uh, but apparently the guy is like, everybody's all hyped up on him, saying yeah. that he's got like the best energy. And that he's going to be really good with young guys. Um, Deshaun Watson, I mean, because the Jets have the number two pick. So if they send that over to Houston, Houston can get Justin Fields. Um, yeah. Unless, I don't think Justin Fields is an NFL quarterback, dude. Huh? I don't think Justin Fields is an NFL quarterback. I, I don't, I don't either. Uh, but I also, I'm so, I didn't think Joe Burrow was, and I didn't think Justin Herbert was. Uh, yeah, so what that, that's know? such a weird, a weird gray area. I don't know, man. If I'm Deshaun Watson, I don't. I, I want to fucking stay steer far away from the Jets, just because of history. Just because they suck dick. But they're they got a lot of places in peace. Uh, you know, pieces of place. Yeah, they've got yeah. a lot of pieces in place. Well, the Jets know, have gotta, some, The Jets have four first round picks over the next three years. And Deshaun Watson is already used to playing in a shit franchise with no talent around him. At least now he'll have a coach. I if Deshaun that, Watson, if Deshaun Watson leaves, you think JJ Watt leaves? I think JJ Watt's gone no matter what. Yeah. I, I mean, I if the, if, if, if the jets trade Sam Darnold, they could probably get a few more first rounders too. There's the only thing I could think. I mean, the jets could be playing this all the way to the wire because I think the Jets are going to want to see because there could be a chance. There could be a chance that Urban Meyer takes Justin Fields. 
because he recruited Justin Fields. Yeah, that is that's such a that's a fucking pipe dream, dude. People are saying that. There's no way it's not Trevor Lawrence. I agree, but the, if you're the Jets, don't you wait and see? Because if you have Trevor Lawrence, you can get whatever you want. You can of get course. any. I mean, the bounty you would get for having Trevor Lawrence, but yeah, Justin Fields not nearly is. But you know, there is also Deontay Smith or Devonte Smith, and uh, there, there's yeah. like some people that you can get you can get for that second pick. But I don't know. Urban Meyer is going to flop. By the way. Mm. I don't know, man. Urban Meyer, I, I'm yeah. I'm back and forth on this. The Jags are in a great position, dude. Jags have the first overall pick. They have 11 picks in the in the 2021 draft. Seven picks in the first four rounds. Most cap space in the NFL. Bringing in Charlie Strong as the assistant head coach. Do the probably I mean, gonna probably gonna bring in Dwayne Haskins as their backup. Maybe Michael Thomas is apparently pissed off in New Orleans. Maybe he's an Ohio State guy. Maybe they fucking bring him over there, dude. You really think they're gonna bring in Dwayne Haskins? There's no fucking. I wouldn't way. be surprised if they brought him in and brought him in as like a you know he fucking he recruited Dwayne Haskins. Yeah, but Dwayne Haskins has had plenty of time to show who he is. Uh, Dwayne's out of the league, dude. No, he's a backup next year. No problem. I'm I'm telling you, he's out of the league. He's practice squad at best. My, my whole thing is I understand both sides of the thing here. Urban Meyer makes a lot of sense because he's a player's guy. He's not doing offense. He's not doing defense. He's a fucking, just a guy. Like he's the guy, but the reason that I've heard a few other people say this kind of same thing. The reason that a lot of college coaches don't do good in the NFL is because they don't have complete control. Do you know what I'm saying? In college, you have complete control. When you're dealing with teenagers, it's different from dealing with, I mean, he could, you know, when you're a coach, you're potentially coaching people your eight or, you know, 37, 40 years old. Play. There are players who are very old. Yeah. These guys don't need a father figure. Right. And these are guys who are used, these coaches are used to implementing curfews, having team dinners, uh, knowing the parents of all of his players, having that card over him where like, if something's not going well, he can call mom or dad. Um, hey, you know what's cool though is that if Urban Meyer flops, he doesn't want to be there anymore. He could just do the same thing that Adam uh, Adam Sandler's mom does in uh, The Water Boy, where she goes, "Ow!" and holds her head. <laughs> <laughs> you guys lost twelve games. Ow! And then he has tension headaches all of a sudden again, yeah, and now he's Urban's gone. Having his fits again. I don't know, man. That's crazy. Uh, let's wrap up one last football thing. Just that the Tennessee head coach was fired for recruiting violations. The AD is uh, retiring, quote unquote. Yeah, the um, AD is Phil Fulmer. He, he's a fa- he was like a big time SEC coach. He was coaching them the last time they were relevant. Yeah, Tennessee has been. I, I think that Tennessee is cool, but they're just like I just had texted you. They're just one of those bullshit SEC teams right now. They're the Vanderbilts. They're the you know Kentucky in my mind. Yeah, they're like. I a- think Tennessee is cool all overall, but what's interesting? Apparently, Peyton Manning, who I think this is because he's trying to set up his his little nephew to go to Tennessee. So apparently, Peyton Manning is going to have a big role in finding the next head coach, which leads a lot of people, including myself, to think about. Peyton Manning's little best friend forever, his offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach in Denver, who led him to a record breaking breaking season, the recently fired Adam Gase. But Adam Gase bombed so hard in New York. I guess so I'm did, dude, I mean, but Nick Saban bombed in fucking Miami. That is true. That is I don't true. know, man. They're in the SEC. They're fucked no matter what. So who gives a fuck? Yeah. So yeah, with their fucking popsicle ass looking uniforms. I love, I love the uniforms. I love the checkers. I love the whole, the whole thing. I just think that they, they're in the SEC. My friend was in the drumline, drumline for University of Tennessee when they were filming that Nick Cannon movie, Drumline. Oh yeah. And uh, they used, they, they filmed that there at University of Tennessee. They used their marching band, but uh, because he was white, um, they had to make him wear gloves for all his shots so that they could use, so they could cut up to like Nick Cannon or whatever drumming. But like OJ him. Simpson gloves or like gloves that make it look like black guy hands? No, neither. What Just like white, like professional marching gloves. Oh, okay. Gloves. I see, I see, I see, I see. Gloves. All right. That's, I just wanted to put that in real quick. Um, I mean, <laughs> let's go back to some baseball, some baseball stuff. I kind of talked about it earlier, dude. I think that this Mets thing is really going to put a stink on him, man. This is a bad fucking time when they're in the process of trying to land you know, they're trying to land fucking um, George Springer. They're trying to land t- Trevor Bauer, most likely. There's a lot of shit going around, dude. And Is it's George just Springer not from America. Yes. 
I don't like George Springer. He's a great player. I think he's a shithead. George. Yeah. Um, okay. Interesting. Um, wait. Okay. So keep going. Sorry. I was just saying, I think that this whole thing puts a stink on the Mets. This is not, this is the worst, the worst possible time for this to happen right now when they they're looking for a few more pieces and they're not going to get them. I don't think because of this. Do you think, or do you think that Cohen making such a swift and final decision means that he's the kind of leader that can accurately, sh- you know, steer a ship during a lot of turmoil. Cause I don't know, man. I wonder how I really don't know. Feel this is going to be to them in free agency. And also you never know who they were going to get in the first place. Who's still on the market besides Springer. I didn't hear everybody else you listed off. Uh, Springer Bauer. technically no, not DJ. Let I'm sorry. Springer, uh, Trevor Bauer, technically JT Real Muto, which I don't, I got some thoughts on that. And it's, there's a bunch of random guys. There's your Marcelo Zunas, there's your Nelson Cruzes, there's a bunch of random second tier guys, even though Marcelo Zuna is a, a beast. A lot of teams right now, though, dude, in the NL are waiting to see what the final verdict is from the MLB on the NL DH this season. They don't know if there's going to be a DH in the NF, NL. So I think a, a few teams are kind of waiting to see what happens to see if they need that one more piece or not. What do you think? Do you think, do you go, do you, if you had to streamline it, do you go both have a DH or neither have a DH? You personally, your commissioner. Oh, I make a permanent NLDH. Pitchers don't need to be hitting. What are you talking about? That's retarded. Yeah. Why would you, I don't, there's no reason for one league, either both league, the pitchers hit or neither leagues, the pitchers hit. Why would there be a difference? I'm not saying that to you specifically. I'm just saying, what is, what's the reasoning for that? You yeah, don't need think, to have your pitchers hit that it, it, I think Zach Granke would argue with you. Yeah. Well, he, you know, he would <laughs> like to argue about a lot of stuff. Probably all the numbers in the, in, boop, boop. probably all the numbers in pie too, for all, for all that I care. 3.14971. Just that's, that's all that's going through Zach was like Granke's head every time he's pitching. 3.14971999444555. Just go oh, all the numbers in pie. The Playboy article, uh, the Miss Playboy uh, calendar stats in uh, Major League Baseball to get rid of his yips. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, dude. I just, I think part of the thing, like Trevor Bauer talks about a lot, as far as moving the game forward, the DH in both leagues is going to move the game forward because it's going to give you that much more excitement. It's going to give you nine meaningful at bats rather than eight. And then one dude up there who looks like he has no arms. The Padres do the Padres keep on pounding Joe Musgrove, solid pitcher to add to their rotation, probably a four or five guy, 33% uh, strikeout rate, which is fucking great. He's Mm -hmm. a fine pitcher. He's probably, he's like an ace on the pirates. He's going to be a four or five guy for the Padres. Um, Honestly do though. Padres have somehow made all these moves and have still retained seven out of the top 100 prospects in the MLB in their farm system. How are they? Are they just, are they big spenders now out of nowhere? Dude, out of nowhere, which is kind of just showing any team can fucking do it. DJ LeMahieu fucking back with the Yankees. I hate this shit. DJ LeMahieu signed for six years, 90 million, which is dumb. I don't understand what the discount is. I think he just wanted a longer contract rather than higher AAV. But six years, 90 million is the best he actually got because apparently the Dodgers offered him four years, 60 million, which AAV is lower or higher, I mean. Um well, I'm trying to, I don't know math actually. No, it's about 15 million, which is about the same thing he got with the other team. So he got four years, 60 out, million. I just, I wanted people to watch you think. That's hard, dude. I'm trying to do math. Uh, the blue <laughs> Jays, the blue Jays offered him four years, 78 million. That's the highest AAV he would have got. But uh, in the end, he goes back to the Yankees, you know, whatever. I hate when people fucking make a big stink and then go back. He's doing that thing that girl, that girls and guys do when they break up with somebody, they're like, Hey, remember her? Remember him? They're a piece of shit. Right. And you're like, dude, I always hated that bitch. And then two days later, they're back together. And you're like, well, now I called your girlfriend a bitch. And here we fucking sit stupid. (laughs) Yeah. I like how in this analogy, there's no problem. Like that's not your fault at all. (laughs) What with agreeing with my friend? This, th- what this really does is puts pressure on the Dodgers to re-sign Justin Turner. He wants four years, but he's 36 years old. They're not going to give him that. He's, they're going to offer him two years, maybe 15 million bucks. He rightfully is going to retire a Dodger at age 38. Maybe they give him one more year after that and go up to 39. He wants four years, which the Blue Jays are probably g- – sorry, I have a big booger. Oh, gross. Um, disgusting. Uh, I, was not, I was made for radio. He 
seemingly the Blue Jays are going to offer him four years because the Blue Jays are going to lose out on every prospect. Maybe not now because the Mets, but four years with the Blue Jays, he adds a good veteran presence with all the young stars they have. That's a good deal. JT Real Muto, once again, he's going to probably go back to the Phillies. Phillies just offered him $100 million over five years. It's north of $100 million, so it's probably like 105, 110. And after the Mets had signed Brian McCann, the Yankees now, they got money tied up in DJ LeMahieu. It just seems inevitable, and it's going Wait, to happen. the Mets have Brian McCann currently? I'm pretty sure Brian McCann, the catcher, right? Yeah. Yeah, the Mets have Brian McCann. Um, I'm what, pretty what, sure I could be wrong. ahead of me, same high school. Um. And the Yankees have money tied up in JT Romuto. It just seems inevitable. That probably happens by the time this goes out. Um, Trevor Bauer, he's going to fucking just keep milking this thing as long as he can. Um, people now are saying Blue Jays, dude. I had said Angels to you in a text message, mm-hmm. but what I've read since then is that him and Mickey Calloway, the Angels manager, don't get along because they didn't get along in Cleveland. He thinks Mickey Calloway and him just did not see eye to eye. He's going to be the last one off the table though, because he's going to want to see where everybody else goes and what everything looks like before he makes any kind of decision. I imagine there isn't an organization in major league baseball where there isn't somebody that Trevor Bauer is at odds with. Yeah. He's sick in the head and I love every second of it, dude. Yeah. He's great. Um, He's a nice guy though. I mean, in his vlogs, you watch him, he calls like every baseball player to wish him luck before a surgery. Yeah. Uh, George Springer, last one here. He's definitely not going back to the Astros. That's one thing that's clear to everybody. Probably also going to happen by the time this episode comes out. I was thinking Mets, but who knows with this whole thing? I'm thinking Blue Jays. I'm really leaning towards the Blue Jays because Mets president Sandy Alderson on a podcast the other day said that the team is still engaged with Springer in a loose sense. So I think that's kind of fizzled out if I'm if I have any guess you think there. If there's any problems with the Astros as a free agent? Uh go you know or is it just limited to maybe the Dodgers and the Yankees with the whole with cheating, the cheating thing shit. yeah that's in, it's interesting but I mean the Dodgers are strong in the outfield for the most part the Dodgers are Springer's the only person who hasn't been mentioned once with the Dodgers he can't go there they were he was just fighting with Joe Kelly and all those guys two months ago I know it's interesting Springer's not going to the Dodgers right right I wasn't suggesting the Dodgers or the Yankees as a possibility, but I'm wondering what I'm saying is I wonder if all the teams hate these Astros or if it's just the ones who lost to them, you know? I yeah. Mean, I mean, Red I bet. Sox. Yeah. Red Sox would be like, Hey, we're same shit, brother. Let's keep it going. Yeah, let's keep it going, uh, dude. You, you, all you right. Know the uh, dick kid. Yeah. We yeah, yeah. You know, the dick pick kid, right? <laughs> That's a, a new, a new Western cowboy, the dick pick kid. <laughs> hilarious uh all right dude let's go on a deep dive and wrap it up brian what do you got dude um i wanted to do a quick deep dive on bill spaceman lee um are you familiar with him at all i'm not so he was a he was a really good pitcher in the 70s he was a um left-handed kind of ground ball greg maddox style pitcher won 17 games three years in a row uh went to the 75 world series the one with the famous carlton fisk doing this um, he, he pitched two games, left both games, uh, with a lead. Um, I think they ended up losing both those games, but, um, he, he was the real deal. He had like a hundred, he had over a hundred wins. He's like 119 wins. His ERA was in the threes. Um, he's a complete, uh, what's the word, uh, freak or free spirit. My dad was like, it's funny because I, I heard about him first from my dad. He's a legendary Boston character because he was on the Red Sox for 10 years, and then he went to the Expos um, after that. But my dad's like, yeah, friggin' Spaceman Lee. He was a great pitcher, but he's always on the train talking to himself. He's a complete wacko. I have heard about this. I've heard about this guy. Schizophrenic nut. And that, that's yeah. that's what I thought of him growing up. That's all I'd ever heard of him. But I looked into him. He's just like a liberal. He's not... <laughs> Not a schizophrenic nut. <laughs> <laughs> he he's just like he wants like you know healthcare and shit. But that's he, so uh, funny. He uh he was real outspoken about smoking weed back then, like while he was in the league in 1979. He didn't retire. And he didn't. We'll get into that in a second. But 1979, he was on the cover of High Times. Um, hilarious. And he was like, yeah, I sprinkle weed on my buckwheat pancakes. It makes me, uh, he claimed that smoking weed made him, um, helped him deal with the bus fumes when he would run on his way to the stadium. 
which obviously is a joke because there's no way he was jogging to work, but it still was pretty controversial. Um, Damn, he was going all out and like really fighting to smoke Reggie too. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, he also stood up for ball players every time he got in trouble. It was over somebody else getting traded, not him. Like he was a Red Sox for 10 years. And uh, after the Carlton Fisk uh, or, or uh, the Bucky Dent year, 1978, Bucky Dent hit a home run to uh, send the Red Sox home in the, um, you know, to go to the, it was between the Yankees and the Red Sox to go to the World Series. Yankees, it's a legendary home run. But in that series, there was a pinch hitter who hit uh, two home runs to uh, put the team ahead. He had an insane c- series and then the Red Sox traded him. He was a kind of an auxiliary player, but Bill Spaceman Lee is a real like for the, for the team guy. And he thinks even if the guy isn't necessarily like a huge role coming up, you got to thank the guy by giving him a contract for his contributions. And he's like, yeah. So he went on TV and he's like, this guy's got a pregnant wife. He just bought a house in Boston. He busted his nuts for this team. And you got oh, the best thing you guys can do is trade him. You're a disloyal backstabbing organization. And then boom, he's gone. Uh, and then he goes to Montreal and Montreal, they have a good team. They got Gary Carter, Spaceman Lee. They make the playoffs 81. Uh, they have a guy who I can't remember. Um, I can't remember his real name, but his nickname was like cool, cool breeze. That was his nickname, baseball player. It was some guy who was a star uh, that year who was really nonchalant. He was like a real chill dude, kind of an Aaron Rodgers temperament, like doesn't get too yeah. fired up. And uh, they traded him because they thought he was um, lethargic uh, because he turns won- out he's just a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't too fired up or whatever. And Bill Spaceman Lee saw this as dog whistle language and was like, Oh, you're calling him a lazy. And he says it, uh, you know, uh, you know, friend. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he says the our organization, you know, is dumb and racist or whatever. And so then they, they fire him, but not only do they get rid of him, but they blackball him from joining any other team. He was still good. Um, he was 10 and 10 that year but he was still pretty damn good. Um, He eventually ran for president in 1988, uh, (laughs) which everybody runs every five years. Some wacko runs for office and thinks it's a crazy idea, but uh, pretty much. Yeah. Like Roseanne, Roseanne, Kanye, Paris Hilton. Yeah. It's a standard move for a crazy person. Um, But uh, he ran as a joke though. His platform was based on this, uh, uh, the, he was a member of the rhinoceros party and he ran on um, banning the DH. Um, he ran on banning both guns and butter, which I don't think I don't need to have time to explain that to you. Um, I, I know guns and butter. Who do you think okay. you're talking to? He, he was like, I'm going to ban guns and butter because uh, both kill. Um, he wanted to ban dome stadiums and AstroTurf. Um, he said if he was elected, he would bulldoze the Rockies so that Canada could have a few more minutes of sunlight. Um <laughs> He won a few votes. He won a few votes. I would have voted for him. I'm, I'm, if somebody's running on a purely baseball platform for the most part. <laughs> he also, um, he ran for governor also in 2016. And you know what I like about this guy? He lives in the woods. He makes baseball bats now. Um, he, oh, by the way, he still plays semi-pro baseball at 72 years old. Oh, beautiful. Uh, he's the oldest person to ever win a professional baseball game as a pitcher. Um, he hit a I home run. I, I tried to find good footage of it. There's nothing good enough to play on here, but he hit a home run in a semi-pro game at like 68 years old. I love seeing that. Like those videos of like Manny Ramirez or uh, Roger Clemens pitching. Remember I sent you that video yeah. probably like a year ago, Rafael Palmero hitting a bomb. Yeah. Nolan Ryan like, was like pitching into his sixties. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Um, but he ran for what I like. These guys, if you look at people of his ilk, these like eccentrics from the seventies and the eighties, they always end up going like, it seems like he would have ended up being a big Trumper guy or whatever, but he ended up being a big Bernie guy and he ran for governor of Vermont and just mirrored Bernie's platform and ended up getting, he ran for some, he ran for a party. He said he had never heard of uh, until they gave him the nomination, but uh, he's like, what's the Nazi green party? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nationalism and socialism. So you guys are like patriotic socialists. Yeah. Yeah. What's the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh yeah, no, he's he's stayed a hippie. 
his entire life. Um, and there's great videos of him. He, the only thing is he really thinks he's the wittiest motherfucker alive. Um, and he reuses lines. If you do like, as I was doing this deep dive, I was watching video after video after video. And he's like a stand up comic. And he, he really delivers the same lines over and over again and pauses for laughter every single time. And then if nobody laughs, he fills it up with his own laughter. Um, but because he'll like one of his famous lines is uh, they asked him when in the 70s, they said, how do you feel about drug testing in Major League Baseball? And, or they said, how do you feel about complete drug testing uh, in Major League Baseball? And he goes, let me tell you something. I've tested them all, but I don't think we should make that mandatory. <laughs> and he's like, huh? huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, That's yeah, beautiful. And they're like, how's it like? I mean, is when you play baseball at age 68 and you're in these senior leagues, is the baseball any good? He goes, I am, but they aren't. Yeah. And then he just pauses for laughter, but he's a cool dude. He makes, there's a great video. I don't know. I like, I unwind to woodworking videos. I love watching dudes or, or whatever, make stuff out of wood. And there's a great video of him showing this reporter how to make a baseball bat. And they start from a maple tree and it ends as a bat. And it's one of the most relaxing, the greatest rocks. videos I've ever seen. In my yeah. Life. Uh, anyway, Great pitcher, great personality. I I love right now. He would not be controversial now because he was like controversial for being against the Vietnam war. He was controversial. And I saw a great one. I'll end on this too. Um, there's a famous Boston hockey player, Phil Esposito. He's a, he was a legend. Uh, he played with Bobby Orr during their championship years in the sixties and seventies. And, and uh, Phil is getting uh, elected into the baseball hall of fame or into the new England sports hall of fame. The same year, Bill Spaceman Lee is getting, I hear an interview with Phil Esposito on a podcast and he goes, I'm up there getting my award and Bill Spaceman Lee gets an award before me. And out of nowhere, he says that he really appreciates what Colin Kaepernick did. And fuck did that stick in my craw. I said, what the hell does that have to do with a goddamn sports award? And I told him, I said, Christ, I disagree with you so much. I can't even talk. And I just love that Spaceman Lee is just like, whatever, man, you should smoke weed. Yeah. <laughs> He's got like a Jimmy Buffett, like white goatee with an earring in. And I just love these old school folk. I mean, he's literally never fit in. He would fit in now. He's kind of a Trevor Bauer, Kyrie Irving, Arian Foster. These guys yeah. who have brains. Um, I, anyway, I don't know. I really. That, That's that great, dude. That's on that. He rocks. Yeah. Bill Spaceman Lee he lives in the woods in Vermont now. Shouts out Bill Spaceman Lee. Maybe if we can get him to sit down on his thing for a while, or if he even has a computer, that'd be dope to get him on. Oh, I would love that. Last thing I'll say about him is that also is that in his book, I have a book of his called Baseball Eccentrics that he wrote, which uh, tells stories of all the crazy people who've ever played baseball or, you know, eccentric people. And uh, he uh, um, he talks about people used to make fun of him for being from California. Obviously, he's from California. Um, he was born in Burbank and he was raised in Marin County. And, um, you know, and they, he talks in his book about how people said, there ain't nothing from California. It's a serial state. Ain't nothing but nuts and flakes, you know, or whatever fruits, nuts and flakes. And uh, it's in this book. And people were saying that to him in the sixties. And I had a guy say that to me at a gun range in Florida. I was going, I gave the guy my ID and he goes, I, he it has the state of California on it. He looks at, it, he looks at me and he goes, welcome to the United States of America. <laughs> you can tell he was, you, it felt like it was like, this is my moment. It's like his tonight show. Like he was so stoked to see a California ID and all these lines ready. And yeah. uh, he goes, how's life in California? And I was like, I don't really make enough money to feel the consequences of the taxes. So it doesn't matter to me. And I'm sure you don't either. And uh, he looked at me and he goes, uh, well, you know, they call it the serial state. Like, <laughs> like, that's not the line you were supposed to give me. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> Ain't nothing but fruits, nuts, and flakes. And my dad hits me, goes, Do you hear that? Nothing but fruit, nuts, and flakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, dude, this is great, man. Well, let's uh let's wrap it up, dude. Thanks guys for listening. Five stars on Apple. Brian, great deep dive. Great seeing you. You know. Can't wait to see you in person and get one of those classic Brian Vokey hugs. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for listening. We love you guys. Goodbye.